This is Texas wide receiver, Adonai Mitchell. 434, 40, 62, 205, 98th percentile broad jump. He went yep. to Georgia. He went to Texas. He's yep. an early declare. He's only 21 years old. When I watched him, I felt like I just wanted a little bit more. I have a feeling that you like him more than I do, so I'm going to need you to sell me on why A.D. Mitchell could be a potential first rounder. Just quickly, this is why I love these prospect videos so much. Hayden and I have never compared notes on any of these prospects before having these conversations, and you get to sit in, and it's even better when we disagree, and I think we disagree here with A.D. Mitchell. I think his body control is just excellent when adjusting for the football in the air. I mean, he throws his back shoulder back, the timing, the leap for a contested catch. He plucks passes away from his body, away from his frame. I mean, his in route fluidity, again, especially when the ball is in the air for his size at 6'2", mm -hmm. 205, that is mesmerizing mm -hmm. to me. It is captivating to me. You don't see it very often. It is, again, to me, Devontae Adams-esque in just that one department, not the rest mm -hmm. of it, in just that one department. And I will make a dozen excuses for a dude who just moves differently <laughs> than everyone else. I see all the high upside glimpses from him. There's these double moves on the perimeter where it seems like he is like gliding. When he takes yeah. off on to burst, he is just flying. There by. are times when he beats corners twice on the same right. route. Yes, I see that. The, the little first, first jump right down the line. I thought he's a more of a straight line guy than kind of a side by side uh, movement player. Like you said, though, the ball tracking ability, I thought was really good. He has a lot of body control at the catch point as well. Uh, Texas used him on these downfield routes a lot. He had a 16.0 average depth of target. He's got this very large catch radius as well. They would put him isolated at times so he can kind of operate as this X wide receiver down the field threat totally. definitely can do all that stuff. I think if you guys watch our Brian Thomas videos, we're kind of taking the opposite stances here where when I was watching AD Mitchell, I thought there were some times where he'd actually kind of slip on his in breaking and out breaking routes. And for whatever reason, I, I don't, I can't understand this for a guy that runs four, three, four, maybe the worst yards of the catch potential that I could ever possibly see only 3.2 <laughs> yards after the catch. There were some times where he was just kind of like, give up and slide kind of like what Tyra Lockett does, but this is <laughs> college yeah, those guys do it too. Yeah. And he, they, they're not six two two Oh five like AD Mitchell uh, was. And then some of his stats, we'll get to those later, very inconsistent player. So I see the upside. Like I think I'm probably going to view him as like an early round two prospect, but if he does X, Y, and Z takes a little bit of a step, this is a guy that has plenty of ceiling. So I've seen all these like routes that you guys are talking about that right. love AD Mitchell. There were just so many routes where I'm like, what is going on here? Yeah. The statistical profile is a fascinating one. So let's like almost do it mm -hmm. beat by beat. Okay. He opened his career with two years at Georgia. First, let's take that second one. He missed almost the entire season due to a high ankle issue. But that first year, I believe he was a three-star recruit, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. He steps into that Georgia team and it with Brock Bowers, with Lad McConkey, with James Cook, with Darna Washington, Jermaine Burton's on that team too. Mm -hmm. He steps in and has the second most targets on that team with 52. Now, was the efficiency there? Was the catch rate there? No, but he, again, as a true freshman, is the X wide receiver who right. goes down the field and is asked to win in isolation. And he stepped up in massive moments, right? He was the go-to target against Alabama to have the go-ahead touchdown to win the national championship, right? He was the go-to target the next year. Again, as soon as he came back from that high ankle issue to beat Ohio State, gets like six or seven targets in that one game, his second game back from this massive, massive injury. And then he transfers to Texas uh, to be closer. He has claimed to his mm -hmm. daughter who was two years old right. at the time, about two hours away, the Texas campus is. Uh, there's a lot of other statistical, let's say anomalies. Yes. Uh, like you talked about with his yards after catch, he is awful in his yards per route run, his EPA per play, all of it. I will add that if you look at his career targets, he only had 15 targets if we take them from behind the line of scrimmage to four yards down the field, right? Yeah. Compare that to 31 career targets, 30 plus yards down the field. So he was not spoon fed any type of production yeah. at all. Just three screens this past season mm -hmm. at Texas. So a lot of times those change the counting stats. And it's one reason why, you know, this past season, 
55 receptions, 845 yards, and 11 touchdowns were the most of his three-year career. Like you said, was not spoon-fed easy targets. And then I would say that uh, I, I know people like Quinn Ewers. I mean, some of these targets were thrown, I mean, all over the place as well. The inconsistency kind of translates to his game logs. He only has three career games above 80 yards. When he transferred to Texas, he had eight games under 50 yards. So he's this boom-bust player until proven Otherwise, and I think there could be potentially a reason why he wasn't given these underneath targets. I've seen him slip a couple times. I think he's a straight line athlete. Maybe that's why he wasn't used in this screen game. I think at times I don't like bringing this up very often, but I saw inconsistent effort. There's like kind of like maybe five to 10 routes per game where he would just not run. I know it's a kind of half field feel uh, half field reads, but there were some targets where I'm like, you got a boogie guy. You have a you have a wide open lane and he kind of takes the play off. So. On top of that, he was asked that question during NFL Combine Week. I like to I like to change my pace and routes. Uh, I never run routes full speed. Um, you know that's just that's just a part of my game that you know allows me to run routes for the whole drive um, and just mostly just feel like I'm in control. You know when I'm running routes and um, you know with the people I'm going against and things like that. 70% effort yeah. at times in his route. And I actually think his route pacing at times is one of his assets. Yes. Like some of the best wide receivers in the league mm -hmm. do shift gears in terms of their route running. One, I'm sure the Kansas City Chiefs loved hearing that. It was not my Kadarius, favorite answer. <laughs> right, the Kadarius Tony situation. Right. And I'm sure some teams won't enjoy that. It's weird. I think during Georgia, if you go back and watch those two years, you saw like almost max effort at all times. And I kind of think like at Texas, that they allowed him to do that. I'll right. be on the lookout for it during Xavier Worthy's tape at the yeah. same time. I and mean, it might just be the style of offense that they ran that they allowed them to do that. But I'm with you. If he runs routes 70% pacing and speed in the NFL, that's not going to cut it. I just, yeah. I, I don't think that we're going to sit back and watch Adonai Mitchell in the NFL slip on multiple routes and run 70%. That's just at least what I'm banking on. <laughs> We better, we better hope so. Uh, just kind of round out some of these other stats. Uh, age adjusted production. Remember, he's an early declare, so he's getting boosted. Only forty fourth percentile. Now there are other first one wide wide receivers that are kind of in this average to below average range that can still pop off. But like you said, nine percent first downs per route. That's below average. 1.7 yards per route run. That's well below average. Now, the context here, we talked about the quarterback play. There's also a bunch of guys at Texas that are going to be drafted in the top three, four rounds, including a running back, another receiver, uh, actually two receivers, and then another tight end here. So uh, it wasn't the best environment. Uh, but also when I was watching, just I, I just watched all of his plays where he was blocking for a screen. And man, he just didn't give a shit. I, I don't know what it is. So that's kind of where I think why the production does not match the athleticism is the, just this uh, these other things. And I, I don't know what to do with that because like you said, at the top of the show, his speed, his body control, his tempo in his routes, when he's on it, he's on it. And even some of these routes where I'm seeing on where he slips uh, on these little in-breaking routes, there's other slant routes where he creates as much separation as you can possibly oh, want. So that's why I'm just very frustrated with what to do with this type of profile. So to me, this is classic boom bust early round two. I would understand why somebody would want to take the swing in round one. He can be a legit X wide receiver. A hundred percent. Those guys are very hard to find. He can yep. go to the bills or the chiefs and one of those teams and really pop off early. A couple kind of comps I, I saw on the low end. It's like Denzel Mims mid tier. It's Devonte Parker. I think it might be more like Sammy Watkins, who had all the athletic traits, were kind of inconsistent. Now, Ad Mitchell's a little bit bigger than Sammy Watkins is, but I think that's the type of player that I'm working with. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to this: early declares, 21 years old, from Power Five schools that are elite athletes. That is the traits to look for as prospects. Ad Mitchell checks every single one of those. He just didn't produce like the other studs. And I think that's going to be the kind of thing that maybe once you get them in interviews and stuff, maybe there's a little bit more clarity, but from the outside looking in, just felt like I was this close to loving him. Again, I, I think some of the easier targets within four yards downfield, that could boost some of the yards per route run, yes. the EPA per play. And also like every single wide receiver has these, but you go back and watch and he has like four yards of separation and then spraying passes from Quinn yeah. Ewers or underthrown ones that mm -hmm. again, it should be a long touchdown, but yep. nope, got to try to work through and make up seven yards of the pass. Yeah. Our buddy Brett Coleman put out mm -hmm. a comparison of CD lamb, which 
I get when he's at the peak of his route running and his body control. I totally disagree when it comes to his after catch numbers, because yeah. if you remember during his Oklahoma days, CD lamb was one of the best yards after catch players in college football In the NFL. He's very good after the catch. As you noted, Adonai Mitchell has forced nine missed tackles in his college career, <sighs> uh, according to PFF. So I am not here to advocate for him being a yards after catch playmaker. Right. What I am advocating for is I do think he has unique movement in his routes mm -hmm. and in his pacing. And like when you get to a condensed field, 10 yards and those like isolated one-on-ones, Hey, it's me versus you. And the quarterback's going to throw the primary, like we've seen with mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers to Devonte Adams or to Garrett Wilson or to any of these guys. I think he has like somewhat yes. similar body control to that where it's make you miss in a phone booth and mm -hmm. you can even put your hands on me. With that said, someone who also had that, like that almost, levitating flotation, go up and get it was Josh Doxson. And he obviously failed, yeah. but he was older, right? right? Older and wasn't this level of, of an athlete. So yeah. I don't know, man, I, I think like at worst you have a maybe Josh Palmer esque outside wide receiver who maybe can win some of those contest situations down the field. But then if we're talking like peak comparison, it, it hits like you could right. throw out some ridiculous names, I think, I as peak comparisons. I agree. I think that there is a path to reach those. I just think that the odds are a little bit lower than uh, I was really wanting to. But I agree, man. If you're just watching his 10 best routes, I mean. There's some real easiness to his game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's a freak. He's a freak. Um, all right. That does it. Love when we disagree. I know you all love it too. And that means you need to hit that subscribe button. Watch all of our videos while you're here. Leave the thumbs up and check out the next one.